put a ring on it or we're done. I've heard that from people that I'm friends with. If we're going to continue in this relationship, you ask me to marry you or we're done. A true, deep, loving commitment is a collaboration, not a one-way street. Ultimatum is an expression of a one-way street versus a collaboration. When you put a parameter around love like that, instead of a boundary around your needs, you're disconnecting from the relationship. Now you're missing out on both what could have been and what you wanted. Ultimatum rarely works. And if it does, it rarely gets us to where we desire to go. It may short term get us the outcome that we desire, but that outcome may be very short lived. Ultimatums are stemmed from the desire for a specific picture, which is ultimately a result. We are process-oriented, not result-oriented. Hey, Heart Leader community, this is Amber Mikesell, and I am so excited. Silent Your Inner Critic has a release date. We'll be hitting shelves March of 2025, and you have an opportunity to get on the wait list by clicking the link below. And when you do, you're going to immediately get a gift from me. It is the Silent Your Inner Critic Starter Kit, where you'll get 13 tips to get started on silencing your inner critic before the book hits the shelves. So we've been asked a couple of times since we've been together for a while and we're not married if one or both of us have commitment phobia <laughs> and if we've ever thought about issuing an ultimatum to the other one like is there one of us that wants to get married and the other one doesn't and if that's the case why don't we issue an ultimatum and that brought up in our conversation, do ultimatums actually work? There's a show that we watched called The Ultimatum. If anybody has ever streamed it, I don't even remember which Netflix, okay, where it was a show. And does do ultimatums actually ever work? And to answer the question that individuals have asked us, no, it isn't an issue in our relationship. And we can explain why as we offer what we found, both through research, through coaching, and through our own experience as to our view on whether ultimatums do ultimately work. So what would you say? Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess it really depends. I mean, that's that's one that's one answer, uh, you know, in terms of us, that's a, that's a different one. But there are some couples where it really does work. And, you know, we can't make, we can't make everything an exact, this is the only one way that it does or doesn't. Uh, it's just, there's just too many variables in my, in my opinion. Um, and attempting to shoehorn into one approach, yeah, that just, that's not going to work, but I do feel for us, and when it comes to ultimatum, like you're saying, that's just, we view things very, very differently. Um, for us, it's not about a result. And I feel like uh, ultimatums are stemmed from the desire for a specific picture, which is ultimately a result. And so for us, we are, we, we are process-oriented, not result-oriented. And so our process is I choose you. In every now moment, I choose to love you in every now moment. And that's a choice that we provide that freedom to express and experience in every now moment. And so if we place an ultimatum, that would release the active choice. And it would shift us away from a process of continual choosing of love into a result of this is what our love should look like based on societal preferences. And I love that you brought up choice because to me, ultimatums take away choice within the connection or the relationship. I mean, I've heard about so many different types of ultimatums and I've experienced them myself. Like if you choose to be friends with them, then we're over. You need to choose between me or them, right? That's one or put a ring on it or we're done. I've heard that from people that I'm friends with, right? If we're going to continue in this relationship, you ask me to marry you or we're done. Okay. You can have a boundary around that and have clear discussions about a boundary. 
there's a difference between a boundary and an ultimatum, right? Or if someone was struggling to get a job in a relationship, then get a job or I'm leaving you. To me, and what I learned in courses and even what I've experienced myself, when you put a bound when you put a parameter around love like that, instead of a boundary around your needs, then what you're doing is you're disconnecting from the relationship and you're turning the focus into my love only exists for you if you do what I tell you to. And it shifts into a control instead of saying, look, here are my boundaries. Here's in a healthy relationship. Here's what I need to feel safe, to feel secure. And for us to, as we were talking about in an earlier podcast, to feel connected and to discuss through what this process of our connection is going to look like. But when you take away that choice so the other person can share with you what they need, what they're experiencing, what their boundaries are, because it's not all about you in a relationship, right? You're both in it. Then that ultimatum takes away that connected choice and suddenly it shifts to a power dynamic. And to me, that rarely works. Unless somebody is looking to be taken into a direction by a powerful force, like they really want someone to tell them what to do, then it might work. And so, yes, can an ultimatum work? Yes, in certain circumstances. And the majority of circumstances, I would offer it takes away the choice for a relationship to grow and to be nurtured, and to head in a direction where most people desire it to go. I agree. Yeah. Um, as you, shifting dynamics is a really great point. And true, at least from my perspective, I feel that a true, deep, loving commitment is a collaboration, not a one-way street. And so uh, ultimatum is a, an expression of a one-way street versus a collaboration. And so if someone were instead to say, hey, partner, like this is where I'd like my life to go. You know, what are your thoughts? Where are you in that? You know, how can we uh, merge our visions of our future together in, in a way that makes sense for both of us so we can both achieve the goals that we would like? To me, that's still, you now I understand that the, it's a desire for a result but it is more process oriented and it is in a collaboration. It's a conversation. It's a connection. It's honoring both parties versus putting it solely on one side and saying, no, it has to be this way. And in this vision. And oftentimes like we found, I mean, how many times have, have things in life gone greater than we ever could have imagined? We had this one vision and, and then it's like, oh my gosh, that was even better, you know? And so if we're so focused on one thing in one way, Either we miss it completely, we could miss out on this grand, amazing thing um, that you know could be greater than we could anticipate because we're so focused on just this one little thing or this one way. Uh, and then ultimately, because we're focused on that one way, and we might hit it, but we might be very disappointed because you know anything around there creates an un, you know expectation that anyone else can't really understand because they don't know exactly what's going on in your mind in what that vision actually looks like, especially because most individuals aren't, aren't prompted to express it in full detail. Right. And, and then secondarily, uh, it's usually a very limited approach. And so they end up either, you know, maybe not even experiencing that at all. Uh, so now you're missing out on both what could have been and what you wanted. Yeah. And how often do you get what you want? Even if you issued an ultimatum and I've seen this occur. You issue the ultimatum, you get it, and then it's not what you wanted. So you've broken down a connection because the person did do what you desired. It's not what you desired. You're still unhappy. 
they're really unhappy because they gave up their freedom of choice to honor yours. And now the entire dynamic breaks down. So what's the purpose of the ultimatum? That's really the question. What is it that you're truly desiring? And that to me has always been when I look at this from any perspective, why, if the goal is disconnect from the friend or I'm leaving, let's start with that one, because that's one that I have personally experienced. What is it that is truly going on in your partner that is creating that ultimatum? Is it coming from a space of insecurity and jealousy? Is it coming from a space of fearing for your safety because they fear that friend is going to harm you in some way? What's actually behind that ultimatum? Is it that there's a boundary that should be there instead of an ultimatum, which is more of a loving expression of their needs, right? So even if, I'm not saying if an ultimatum comes up in a relationship, you say, that's it, you've issued me an ultimatum, you're attempting to take away my freedom of choice in this, we're done. Because that's an ultimatum in and of itself. Exactly. But can you, as a connected couple, say, look, if you're issuing me an ultimatum and I don't desire to conform to your ultimatum, can we reverse engineer this? Can we come at this and actually understand what it is that you truly desire? So in the case of it's either me or your friend, let's truly understand what is your fear around me being friends with this person? Do you not trust me? Do you not trust them? Do you not feel secure in yourself? Do you not feel secure in our relationship? What's truly happening here? It could be all of those. Any one of those or all of those. And then you can begin to find, that goes back to your journey comment, right? That means that your relationship now begins to go on the journey to understanding and growing in depth. So the ultimatum can actually cause you to get stronger. But if it's being forced upon you and you don't desire to disconnect from that friend, it can also break you down and make you feel like you have zero choice. And it can ruin your relationship. Because if you ultimately give in to save the relationship, animosity can grow. And that can begin to foster other feelings of animosity in other places where maybe you wouldn't have felt animosity, but it's going to rear its little head because it's still there from the fact that you had to let go of a friend that you didn't really want to let go of. And so when we look back at the question that we get asked about, you know, marriage and choosing each other, I know that you had mentioned it's not about the result and or we're not results oriented people that doesn't mean that we don't go after results right it just means the result isn't the key thing that we're striving for we won't go after the result for all costs including sacrificing how each other feels in order to get it and to me and again, my perspective, my experience of ultimatums, often when you issue an ultimatum to your partner, even if it is because they're afraid of commitment, well, if your partner's expressing to you that they fear commitment and you're forcing an ultimatum on them, are you negating the fact that they have a fear, whether you believe it's valid or not? right? You're placing a need for an outcome above their true experience for them. So how can you come together then and say, I see your fear and we desire to go toward this together. So how do we do that? How do we embrace the process as we go toward the goal? 
And you're going to learn a lot about yourself too. Like, why is that goal so important to you? Because once you're married, if marriage is your goal, you're going to be together anyway, right? And so if the goal is marriage, you'd be together all those months or all those years that it would take that person to navigate through that fear. So commit to helping that individual navigate through that fear and show them that you're going to be there for better or for worse. It's well said. And intention is such a key part of this. And no matter where in the relationship, even if it's the beginning stage or, you know, it's further down the line, engagement, marriage, anything in between, it's really, the intention is so key. And if, if there is fear going into the next stage of the relationship or there's shame or guilt or anything that isn't, you know, love and encouragement and connection and peace and safety, you know, all these really what, uh, from, from my feeling, what a relationship should be based on. You know, if you're going into these next stages in those low vibrational frequencies and you're, you're saying, you know, and it's, and it's centered around fear, well, now you're setting the tone for what the relationship's going to be based on. And is that really, like, do you, do we, does, you know, do you want to move forward and take the next step in that space you know and then if if you do then you have to adjust your expectations because if you're going to go into it with from a place of fear then that's the experience you're going to have and you have to learn how to take personal responsibility around that and it can't just be wiped away there is another person and most likely that fear is being experienced from you too like let's say you are you the per like let's say it's me like putting on the the ultimatum to to the other to you or something, like and then you're fearing that. Well, then to some degree there's some fear in me too, or else I wouldn't have the need to place that ultimatum on you and pull your choice away, which is a control dynamic which stems from fear or lack, right? And so if that is the need, then 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 we're both experiencing the fear, and instead of placing that on the other person. As you're saying, if you can look at it from a collaboration aspect, if it does come up, I love that saying like, hey, this is coming up. Like I have this desire to want to put forward an ultimatum. Okay, then let's talk about it. Let's seek to understand where is this coming from? What fears are we both experiencing? And then how can we help each other move forward and come out of that fear? And won't that put us in a better place to be in the next stage of our relationship? And inherently, won't that actually take us to the next stage in our relationship through trust through connection, through, uh, you know, problem solving, you know, all these things that are important in styles of communication that create the longevity of a relationship, which if the goal is marriage, which ultimately is the idea is longevity, then, then the process should be about longevity. Yes. And I'm not going to claim that I've been perfect through our entire connected relationship. What? I totally have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had my moments of insecurity, right? They pop up. And it would have been easy to say things like, okay, put a ring on it. <laughs> but that doesn't solve the insecurity. It would still be there. It's not as though saying a vow stops anything else from happening. We're human. We make choices every minute of every day. What I really needed to do was get in touch with the fact that I was feeling insecure and that I myself needed to own my insecurity and then share with you, look, I know that you could go off and be with someone else any time. And that makes me afraid because my love for you is so deep that to imagine a second of my life without you now would crush my soul. But I don't want that to be a dependent or a codependent relationship. And so how do I 
express that I love you to that depth. But if you being with someone else is what would make you happy, would like truly fill your heart with joy, I want you to have the freedom to tell me that. And in my love for you, would it, would it hurt me? Heck yes. But it would also fill my heart with joy to know that your heart is filled with joy. And that's what love can be. I'm not going to be only happy for you that you're happy or only crushed because you're not with me anymore. I had to allow both things to exist. But if I had only sat in my insecurity, I would have only sat in one side of that. And we wouldn't have been able to talk that through. And then you wouldn't have been able to come back and say, you know what, I feel the same way. Definitely. And I mean, how could you hear anything more beautiful than what you just shared? You know, the depth of that, the true love, the feeling of it. You know, every time you've said it to me, like I can feel it to the very depths of your soul, which hits mine and flows through mine. And it's like, that's, how could I want anything more than that? You know, that is, that is love. And I didn't know that was possible before you because I didn't know it was even possible within myself. And so when I saw it in you, I could say, wow, I can, I can feel that too. And then I get to, what a joy that I get to feel it with someone who feels it for me too. Like talk about intention and purpose behind a relationship in any stage that we take. You know, if that's, that's there in the process, then any choice that we make as, as that creates a result as the byproduct is going to be fulfilled in that is going to be just overflowing in that type of love. I mean, that's what makes us 10 years into a a honeymoon stage in our relationship to where we feel like we have the experience of being together forever, but the giddiness of that new relationship. We don't need a piece of paper to tell us that we can choose that. You know, absolutely. We can choose anything within that, you know, because that framework provides us the longevity that we're looking for. And that's the truth. That's the truth of what we're looking for is the longevity, is the love, is to be each other's best friend, to be each other's confidant, to be each other's cheerleader, to be, you know, the safety net for each other, to be vulnerable. You know, these, these are rare things that humans experience unfortunately these days and then we get to choose that in every now moment for each other and then that compounds over time you know that's that's unbreakable yeah but again i would offer that's that's why it's so important for you to understand if you're getting an ultimatum or you're giving an ultimatum where is it coming from What is the purpose of the desire in the first place? Going back to, like, it's not like I was perfect. It's not like it didn't come up for me. But taking that two seconds, because an ultimatum rarely works. And if it does, it rarely gets us to where we desire to go. It may short term get us the outcome that we desire, but that outcome may be very short-lived. And the person who gave in will likely feel very unsatisfied because it wasn't a mutual decision, right? And if what we're looking for is that solid connection like we have, the more optimal solution may be to figure out the root cause of the desire for the ultimatum and share that vulnerability with your partner to express it so they understand where you're coming from. Now, you're right. Not every circumstance is that going to be appropriate for. We're all unique. All of our relationships are unique and different. But the one thing we do have in common is that we're all human. And we all know that each other are flawed 
and we're all kind of feeling insecure at times. And if we can come at it from that and connect at that and then desire to build each other up, what an amazing relationship you'll have. I can attest to that. Absolutely. Yeah. I do want to touch on the other side of it because I think it's really, really important um, that in all in our conversations we like to kind of we we like to make sure that we're kind of discussing all sides, um, and and that's the part of the individual who might be fearing the the commitment, and maybe touching on that a little bit because I know I had that, and that was a big part of our relationship from the beginning is my fear of commitment, um, especially when I realized that someone was so amazing and I was like, oh my gosh, she loves me. And like, you know, it, it was, a, it hit a lot of insecurities. Um, but mainly the big thing was, is that I, I had yet to fully commit to myself. So how could I commit to anyone, even to someone who was going to commit to me? Um, I had yet to fully accept myself and by through the acceptance of myself, then I have the ability to commit to who I am. You know, I was unwaver. I was like, I was wavering too much and I had yet to become unwavering. And so there was a lot of personal growth in that experience that is so important. And so oftentimes the fear of commitment is, is seen as a, as a diss on the other person in the relationship and that something is wrong with them. And the idea of something being wrong shouldn't be the conversation in my opinion. It may have nothing to do with the other person. It may have everything to do with the individual who's experiencing the fear. And it's not because it's, it could, maybe they do desire to be with someone else. Okay. That's, that's a possibility. That's a probability. Uh, in my case, it was very much that I just had no idea who I was. And so any commitment to you would be, uh, in some way, uh, not, not in integrity. And I had, I needed to fulfill that space of integrity within myself first and say, Hey, this is who I am. This is who I commit myself to be. Um, you know, not with through plain rigidity, like this is who I'm always going to be for the rest of my life. We're going to have a podcast about that one. <laughs> that because I, yeah, yes, that's, that's a whole other other topic. Yeah. Um, but enough to where I can be I can, I can firmly say back to you with unwavering love, connection, the, and, and true commitment that I, I am your rock, and I do, I do love you with every fiber in my being, um, and it, it's because I, I love myself too, and I know you love yourself, and when all of that melds together, that becomes an incredible recipe that is undeniable. It becomes palpable. And, and that's something that's, you know, it, it takes a while to get to. It's not something that you can just say, okay, now I'm choosing it and it sounds ready. You know, it does take time. And that's why I was so grateful for the fact that you were, like, you showed me through the process. If you were so focused on the result and you gave me that an ultimatum, I never would have seen it. I never would have known. So through the process, you were able to show me the depth of the love that you have for me, but also the depth of love that you have for yourself, which then reflected back to me of what's possible. What, what is the amount of love I can have for myself? And then how can that allow me to show up for you in the same way that you show up for me? I love that. And I enjoyed every step of the process because I learned about myself including boundaries, right? Because to me, there's a defined difference between ultimatums and boundaries. Where an ultimatum is so focused on that result, and if I don't get it, I'm leaving. A boundary is, this is how I'm going to permit the outer world to interact with me. And that would include you. It isn't specifically targeted at you. It's like generalized. This is how I allow the entire world to interact with me, including you. Not only you, including you. 
And so as we navigated through these steps, I discovered new boundaries for myself for the entire world, right? Not specifically you. It was, okay, I realized that sometimes, and we just did this over a weekend here. We had a wonderful spiritual um, retreat kind of approach with some friends of ours. And I tend to be very focused on taking care of everybody else and sometimes to the detriment of myself. And I found myself doing that as I was holding space for you to navigate through things. And I realized I need to put a stronger boundary in place for myself so that as you were navigating what you were navigating, I didn't allow it to become all mine to hold for you, that I could be there and hold space for you as you were doing it, but not take it on for me, which is very different. But I needed to do that for everyone, not just you. I needed to hold that in place for my family, for my friends, because I have a tendency to do that so often for so many. And I think this is something that as humans, we tend to do a lot, especially if we're service-oriented people. So it really helped me with my boundary setting. Healthy boundaries are important. They're key in helping us grow. And you did the same thing. As we navigated the process, you discovered more healthy boundaries for yourself and you put them in place for everyone. Not just me, I didn't feel isolated. Like, you bad partner. This is an ultimatum. So I think that that's key too. I agree. I'm really glad you, you voiced that and shared that. Because there's so many, when it comes to ultimatums, there are so many potentialities around why. Um, and I'd like to kind of expand on that. Like another, another personal fear for me was abandonment. And so if you were to place an ultimatum on me, for example... All that does is just if you put fuel to the fire on my abandonment, right? If you don't do this, then I'm gone. That's like, well, then I was, then I'm fueling my ego with saying, oh, I was right. I'll, you know, she's just going to leave me like everyone else. Um, even though, you know, that's a whole other subject. I know I was someone who left a lot of people too. And because it was, I just, I wanted, I rejected people before I, uh, because I didn't want to feel rejected rejection myself because I was afraid they would leave me. So I might as well leave them first. Um, and so there's a lot, there's a lot that each one of us are going through. And the whole point to me of a relationship is to know that you don't have to go through it alone. You can do it with someone who believes in you, who trusts in you, who's connected with you, who uh, might not have the exact same thing, but can understand and that we can support each other and grow and become better, not codependently like you were talking about earlier, but but true, like independently dependent, as you beautifully say, where we both individually can flourish, but co but as a as a team, we're flourishing even more than than we could imagine, right? And so, you know, I had because you didn't give me that ultimatum, it allowed me to move through my fear of abandonment, and then it allowed me to move through my fear of committing to who I am. And here we are, ten years later. You know, more connected than we ever could be. And I know I'm more solid than I've ever been. I know you're more solid than I've ever been. And therefore, we are more solid than we've ever been. And then that gives you so much runway to do so many more things when you do have that solid foundation. And so let's go back to the original question of do ultimatums work? And your answer is perfect, yes and no, right? So yes, in some cases, they get you to the short term. Do they create what you're likely desiring? Chances are unlikely in that event. Again, I don't know everybody's circumstances unique, but if we're running a majority poll, I would say majority poll would be not likely. 
So use root cause analysis, figure out what it is ultimately that you truly desire. Not the this one thing at the end, because likely that one thing is not what you actually desire. What you actually desire is likely all of the experiences that go along with that one thing. If you are initiating a, an ultimatum or an ultimatum is being initiated to you, then clearly you're not on the same page. And so maybe that should be more of the focus. And again, that's process, not result. So how do you, if that comes up, you know, accept the opportunity, say, okay, this is coming forward and want to do this, but let's pull back from the result orientation of it and into the process of it and seek to understand why is this happening and what's coming from it and how can we both grow from it and then pull that into whatever next stage that you desire together. And if you've ever been in a place where you have either been issued an ultimatum or you felt like you need to issue an ultimatum, that could also be resulting from that inner critic rising up and causing those feelings of self-worth or just feeling as though you need to direct a situation. And that's where the book Silence Your Inner Critic might be of benefit. So if you'd like to learn more about how you can increase your inner champion and deal with that villainous foe that is your your inner critic, then take a moment and hop on over to silenceyourinnercritic.com and learn more about our book that is hitting shelves on March 4th. You can sign up there and you'll be notified when you can pre-order that book and get a whole bunch of fun freebies all along the way. And if you like this episode, check out more right here on the Heart Leader Podcast. Thank you.